Now, the Sun newspaper reports that holidaymakers could face being taxed to return to Britain uh, under a new frequent flyer level. The way it would work, apparently, is that travellers who are taking more than one trip every 12 months would have to pay a surcharge and the fee would increase for every trip taken by... uh, families or business businessmen or whoever it happened to be. Well, the Shadow Transport Secretary, Andy MacDonald, has said that the idea is something the party wants to consider. Good idea, bad idea. Well, you can call us and let us know. But in the meanwhile, I'm delighted to be joined on the line by Jenny Jones, Baroness Jones of the Green Party. A uh, very good evening to you, Jenny. Good evening. Thanks for joining me this evening. Is this a good idea? It's an excellent idea. Um, It's been Green Party policy for some time, so I'm absolutely delighted that the Labour Party has picked it up. We're having report after report telling us that we can't carry on with the sort of emissions that we're producing, that we have to do something if we're not going to have a really quite nasty future for our children and grandchildren. And quite honestly, every single form of transport, every single action has to start paying its environmental costs. And aviation's always been an expensive, uh, inefficient way of moving people around, very polluting. And t- technology can help to some extent, but it just can't keep up with the, with the drive. And so uh, this is about time, a frequent flyer levy. So how many flights would you be allowed to take before you start paying the levy? Or would it depend on the distance of the flight? Um, it would be one flight p- per person per year. But Anywhere? 70... Um, uh, I mean, well, would they, would they make would a distinction say, between flying to Australia and, and flying to Mallorca? Uh, personally, I wouldn't, um, because I think that they're equally polluting in terms of uh, the passenger mile. If you think that 70 percent, that's the, the majority of flights are taken by 15 percent of people, half the population doesn't fly once a year. This is actually going to hit the richer people who fly most often and who do the most polluting. It's a very simple principle that the polluter pays and all the money raised from this should go to things like public to clean public transport and um you know better layouts for cities and things like that it's it just madness that we're still thinking about for example expansion of Heathrow when it's such a dirty business jenny you talk about uh travel as being for rich people. But I know when I go to Stansted Airport, for example, what I tend to see is lots of families. They don't look particularly well off. You see lots of folk, in particular at Stansted, and I fly out from Stansted quite a lot, who, um, and I did, obviously, in my previous role as a member of parliament, going up and down every week to Scotland. You see lots of people from Eastern Europe, from Lithuania, Latvia and Estonia, who are coming here to work. Um, It's a very different profile from City Airport in London, for instance, where you do see lots of rich businessmen. You know that because when you walk past the bar, you can see what they're ordering. Uh, Should we not make a distinction between people who make a great deal of money and opt for very expensive tickets and folk are either commuting for work because they have to or are taking family holidays? Well, this is exactly what that levy will do, because if you fly once a year on your family holiday to Mallorca, you don't pay the charge, you don't pay the levy. But if you're flying um, weekly, perhaps to New York, every time you fly, the cost will go up, uh, the levy will go up. And also, if you're flying first class, the levy will be higher in first class than it is in tourist class. So, it, you know, it really is something we should have been doing for a long, long time. And what I would say is to anybody who thinks this isn't a good idea, I would say, what's your plan to keep CO2 emissions from air travel within safe limits? When I say safe limits, I'm talking about a world that would be much, much harder to live on if, if we, we don't have safe limits. So what other alternative is there? This doesn't sound like a vote winner to me, Jenny. Well, I'm afraid um, sometimes policies uh, you ha- are a bit of pill, but actually if you explain them to people, most of the time people can understand that um, it's not that many people flying who fly a lot and they would be paying for better public transport, for example, for those who don't fly or, you know, uh, better, um, better walking and cycling facilities. If we make sure that people understand the levy is being used to benefit them in some way, then I think that they can... Um, that they can accept it. And also, if we just say, you know, it's your children's future, it's your grandchildren's future, 
And we, we have to be sensible about it. I'm reading the Sun story and I'm just imagining what the tabloids might do with this. Uh, yeah. They describe yeah. this as the work of Labour eco-zealots. Uh, the yes. plans are aimed at the rich, but millions of ordinary families will find the cost of their holidays rising yet again. Jeremy Corbyn and his Marxist rabble plan to use every aspect of our lives to fleece us. That's a flavor. Yes, that's a fl- that's a flavor of the kind of uh, attacks that you're likely to face. Well, I did read that, and I thought it was a slightly biased way of <laughs> of expressing it. Really, again, I think yeah, you um, could possibly argue been- that. Uh, The the average family doesn't travel twice a year. So the average family going off on their their annual holiday will pay the usual price and they won't be subject to this levy. It's people who fly often. I I think actually it is really a very simple um, policy to explain. And if you explain that um, we have to clean up our act um, and it's the richer people who who, who are polluting most, and I think people do understand why this has to happen. Talk through the costs for us. What kind of charges do you anticipate um, uh, levying against people if they travel for a second time or a third time? So, for example, if I go to if I go to Mallorca once under your plans, I'm not going to pay anything. If I go to Mallorca a second time with Ryanair or EasyJet or whoever, how much extra will I pay? What will the penalty charge be? I guess that would vary a lot with um, the sort of seat you have and how often you do it. But for example, no, I mean, at the moment, just on the sec, just the, on that second journey. Well, uh, at the moment, we, uh, the airline, airlines are subsidised, and in fact, what happens is you do pay um, things like landing charges, fuel tax, emissions charges, and so on. What you, at the moment you pay something like thirteen pounds for your travel. I mean, we could scrap that air passenger duty that people already pay and just apply the tax differently. And so I would imagine at first it could be very similar to what people pay on air passenger duty, but escalating quite fast because what else can we do? So I just want to CO2 emissions down to an acceptable level so that we in the future actually have a planet that we can live on and feed ourselves on. Sure, when I just want read... to try and establish what the figures are. So you th- you think uh, the first time round, I'm flying to Mallorca, I'm going, I'm not flying any kind of posh airline, I'm going easy Mr. jet. Nicholson, I do not have, I haven't done the maths. This is a Labour Party policy, admittedly. Um, no, no, but I'm, I'm, I'm talking about your proposals because you said the, the Labour Party were, were copying your proposals. So under your proposals, I'm interested in your proposals. Um, so I, my first we journey, I don't pay anything we... extra. How, how much do I pay for my second journey? How much would it escalate? I, I'm just, I think people would like to know what the figures are. Well, I'm sure they would and I'd like to know as well. But we no, haven't green policy because... We are not even close to having this yet. As soon as we, um, for example, if, we, if somebody tabled a bill to do this, we would do the maths. Of course we would. Uh, you, what, what, if you what, were what? an MP, Mr Nicholson, if you were an MP, you know very well that policies come out without any maths attached to them. And oh, no, that's not true. If, that's a, if, if, looks, if you come out with a if policy... It looks, if you come out with a policy... policy with is going to be applied, then the maths is done and it's done very quickly. If, Quite honestly... Uh, if you don't think this is a good idea, you haven't said if it's if you think it's a good idea or not. But what is the alternative? How do we encourage people to fly less? And flying is incredibly polluting. Yes. And um, and you know, uh, at some point, somebody has to be very tough on this sort of activity. What I'm trying to do is to get to the bottom of what your existing policy is. So, of course, I'm not asking you about uh, Labour's figures. I'm asking you about your figures because you you made the point at the very beginning of this interview that uh, Labour was uh, simply adopting a long-standing green policy. And I don't agree with you that uh, politicians uh, on long-standing policies don't have the figures. They have to have the figures because otherwise they get taken apart in the course of election campaigns because people want to know what the figures are. So that's why I'm just quite keen to know what a typical uh, family would pay for a second journey, what the figure would be for a second journey. The first time they cross over from the initial journey that they're allowed under your proposals, the second journey you know, what, what would they be charged for a, a relatively short route inside Europe under existing Green Party policy? 
I think I explained to you that it's policy that was uh, has actually been on the books for quite some time. Yes. But any figures I quoted to you would be completely out of date. So but, you don't um, know. I have explained already that we could, for example, scrap air passenger duty of 13 No, but it sounds like you don't know order. a figure. It's well, a... the figure would be not appropriate for now. I'm wondering why you're obsessing about the figures, because quite honestly, well, because you that... should be but... obsessing you should be obsessing about the carbon emissions that are so dangerous. Well, I don't think I'm and obsessing. This is, this I, is, sorry, this is let's have an exchange. Jenny, of the let's population. have an exchange. It is very, that is actually polluting everywhere for the rest of us. Yes, and so, um, I think people, yeah. agree, I think a lot of people ag- ag- agree, I think a lot of people agree with that. And I, I don't think it's fair to characterise me as obsessing. I, I'm simply asking you for a figure under existing but Green Party policy. You, and can't you can't give, give you... me a figure. I cannot give you a figure. I'm suggesting that perhaps it would be very similar to what people pay at the moment by air passenger duty. Okay. But that figure goes up, that figure keeps changing, and so all of the figures will keep changing. All right. When we get to the point of applying this policy, we will have a very clear... Um, uh, I, thought, very clear I thought it was your policy. The Green Party has a full manifesto of policies. We are not in a position to cost everything. What we say is, if we don't do these things, our lives are going to be considerably worse. All right. If we get to an election, then we do do some maths and we do talk about the numbers. But we're not actually in a position at the moment. Sadly, we are not in the government and we are not in a position to apply this policy. 